hands-on with the Pixel 3 XL, tamper detection for your PC with Purism's Librem key, and Netgear's all-in-one smart speaker and mesh router. Live from the Twitch studios in Petaluma, California, it's the new screensavers. Yeah! <laughs> Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twitch. The new Screensavers is brought to you by LastPass. Secure every password-protected entry point to your business. Join over 43,000 businesses and start managing and securing your company's passwords today. Learn more at lastpass.com slash twit. And by WordPress. Reach more customers when you build your business website at wordpress.com. Plans start at just $4 a month. Get 15% off any new plan at wordpress.com slash NSS. Riding our segways. Welcome to the new screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. And my birth name is Ian Thompson. His <laughs> birth name. His mother would know him as Ian Thompson. This is episode 179, recorded Saturday, October 20th, 2018. Thanks to Mark. He is a PeopleSoft wizard. Wizard for Federal Express and a great reader. Thank you, Mark, visiting us from Florida today. Uh, Ian way. is, of course, a news editor at the fabulous register, register.co.uk. And I would imagine... You're all excited about some of our guests coming up on today's show. You're, he's very jealous of this, <laughs> the Pixel 3 <laughs> and the Pixel Stand. This Wireless is the charging new back at last. Wireless yeah. charging back at last. It's the new phone from Google. I will have my review in just a bit. And yes, we have uh, Purism, the maker of privacy, security, and freedom-focused devices. You're excited about that. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So someone as paranoid as myself. This is great because uh, they've launched the Librem Key. Uh, which uh, USB security token, which can also detect if someone has tampered with your PC. Always an important thing to work out. And Purism's chief security officer, Kyle Rankin, is will join us to show us how that works. How exciting. The Netgear Orbi, which has always been one of my top choices. Actually, the wire cutter now has made it number one for mesh. Okay. It's very fast, but they have a new device that adds to the Netgear Orbi router. It's got Orbi voice. Mesh Wi-Fi extender, Harman Kardon speakers, Amazon Echo, Smarts, Megan Maroney had to get it. She has her review. And she knows her onions. She, yes. she knows her onions. I don't know what that means. Do you not say that over her? Okay. It means, that, it means she knows her stuff. <laughs> really? She knows her onions? Yeah. You Brits are so strange. Oh, it's not like we were wearing them on my belt, which was a style at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am now reading the Patrick Melrose novels, ah. of which there are a great many. Indeed. And it is a great insight into the upper class lifestyle mm, in, yeah. in Great Britain. Yes, it's also it's... fairly comic <laughs> and extremely depressing. It was an HBO show, I think, yeah. with Benedict Cumberbatch. Well, what with that and the crown being on, being on ah, TV now? Just... We all know the Brits now. We just, we just love her. Uh, we're also going to answer some questions in the mailbag. Oh, but first, yes, of course. I know you must have gotten your invitation to the Big <laughs> Apple event coming up. Yes, right after the Porcine Aviation Squad flew over the register <laughs> offices. Pigs do not fly, nor does the register get Apple invitations. Although, this was interesting. There were at least, I think I saw on Reddit, maybe several dozen different Im invitations. Mm. They all have the same uh, text. But the but the but the Apple logos. Somebody collected all the different Apple logos. And yeah. I think there's about ninety of them or something. Ninety of them. Isn't that amazing? Um, um, so the invitation all says the same thing, which is what I don't remember what it is. It's yeah. Irrelevant. Come and come and come and come make and, something. Come and get deafened by Apple stuff as clapping <laughs> in your ear and going woo, woo. We don't know what it is, but but we I think have a fairly good idea that it's going to be iPads because in the uh, yeah. Beta version, the public beta release of iOS 12.1, there are actually images of something called Fall iPad Pros. Mm -hmm. They're full bezel-less displays, no home button anymore. We figure Face ID. Uh, and we don't know exactly what, but it's kind of presumed. I think it's going to be the iPad. I mean, they've given up on the laptops now yeah. pretty much. Well, so. that's a question. So it's presumed to be at least the iPad Pro, uh, a replacement for the 10.5 and, and the 12.9. Yeah. 
but they'll be bigger screens, so they won't. It'll be like eleven and I don't know thirteen. Uh, but that'll be October thirtieth. Yeah. Uh, that was there it is. There's more in the making. That's the. Uh, that's it was the unfortunate though that it was October the thirtieth because one pl uh, one phones or one plus phones had already booked the launch of their 6T phone for October 30th. <laughs> and then Apple came out with their invite. And OnePlus was just what like, happened? Uh, they shifted it to they the 29th. Moved. What are you going to do? Apple's a All the bloggers that were in town for this, oh. then they reimbursed they them on the hotel day. fees. So was, yes. That's and pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. You can just imagine the look, the look in the office when that when the Apple announcement went out, and it's just like, ah, oh, son of a... Well, I think they must have known they were going to... that there, there was a risk that that was going to happen. Yeah, Apple likes was Tuesdays. With every event. Yeah, and it oh, was probably going to be one of the last Tuesdays of the month, probably the 30th. So it's kind of, you know, yeah. I think they stick. were prepared. Uh, Apple uh, also uh, may, I'm interested to hear that you think not, but may mm. announce new MacBooks, MacBook Airs, or Mac Minis, all three of which are desperate to be updated. Oh, absolutely desperate to be upgraded. And this is why you could be right. They may actually do one, but... They've been abandoning the laptop side of the business for right. so long now. I've kind of given up hope right, on yeah. it. And so I'm not going to hold my breath. Yeah. Plus, the keyboard issues are still annoying. You yeah. know, still haven't yeah. solved that one. Uh, they might announce an update to the AirPods. They have had clearances lately of AirPods. You've been able to get them fairly Yeah, cheap. and I heard a rumor that apparently the, the, the manufacturer that's making the AirPods is shifting production to Vietnam to Ooh. get around the Trump tariffs. Oh, yeah, well, that, everybody's doing that, right? Yeah. Uh, there may be a new <laughs> wireless charger, which... Or maybe not. Apple announced it more than a year ago now. Oh, my alarm's going off. Oh, but it's not doing what I was hoping it would do, because I wanted to show you the sunrise on the alarm, but it didn't do that. Oh, it comes up slowly. Yeah, then. so we're, 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 we're review the Pixel. I have the Pixel Stand, too, which has some special effects, including an alarm that supposedly the screen brightens gradually 15 minutes before the alarm goes off just to kind of like it's sunrise. Well, I'm Even sure that would work for some people. Tonight. Usually I need a sharp blow to the back of the head <laughs> no, to get me not, up in the morning. You heard so, my alarm. You know. That's not going to wake anybody up. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, maybe new wireless charging, although... Gosh, it sounds like that that product is never going to come out from Apple. Well, Apple has not always hated wireless charging. They used to have the wireless charging unit, which used the, the populist Qi standard, but then they yeah. buggered around with the firmware stack right. so that it would only work with That's Apple so phones. Now well, what do you saying, think? Oh, you think this iPhone will work with a Pixel charger? Interesting. I don't know. Let's, Let's see. see. Yes. Yeah, it works. It does. You think this Galaxy Note 9 will work? Let's see. Yes, it does. Does it say fast charging? I don't know. I don't know if it's fast charging. Uh, it doesn't yeah, say, I, but I, this like is why we have unified standards stand. like Qi. Yeah. You know, nobody, those, which nobody adheres to, right? Well, there was a six-year six year war for, for the wireless charging standard, and then when Qi finally win it, and Apple goes and mucks around but with Apple the stack. But Apple hadn't invented wireless charging yet. How could have there been six years <laughs> of fighting over wireless charging? Anyway, that's the Google Pixel phone. We'll get, we'll get to that in a, in a little bit. Um, other news. So Apple's event. Oh, I should say one more thing. It is in Brooklyn this year. Yeah. Which means it's on Eastern time, which means it starts at 7 a.m. for me, October 30th. Megan Maroney and I will be here in studio covering the Apple announcement. Huge mugs of coffee in front of you. Big mugs of coffee. And a drip IV. Oh, in. Yeah. 7 a.m. It's in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn School of Music, right? That's kind of interesting. I don't wonder right. why Apple did that. They have this whole campus that they built. Yeah. There's just a little love for the, uh, they've done that recently, a little love for the East Coast from Apple. It's, it's becoming, Google did the same thing, uh, sorry, Microsoft did the same thing yeah. with the Surface launch. Yeah, um, yeah, New York, little, suddenly New York isn't the second city anymore. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I know, but it's a Silicon Valley for goodness sake, plus I hate traveling Come to on. New York. <laughs> uh, Apple is uh, also a little upset at uh, Bloomberg. Mm. For the first time uh, publicly ever, Apple has asked for a retraction. Tim Cook saying Bloomberg needs to retract that super micro story. It didn't happen. Now, I said publicly because it's possible they've asked for retractions in private. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you for a fact they have asked for retraction, retractions pri oh, pri really? privately. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Any, any publication you would know? Um, I wouldn't like to name people because I've signed non-disclosure agreements <laughs> with past employers, but have, it definitely happens. And were the retractions... Uh, granted in the past? Uh, no, they were told to take a hike. I think mostly if a tech company comes to a journalistic enterprise and says, we don't like what you wrote, you'd have to prove it was a lie. Yeah, to get unless it's factually inaccurate. If sue. something's factually inaccurate, journalists are very good about taking stuff down. But if someone says, we don't like the tone, our response is, well, get Sorry. your own magazine and set your own and tone. And Bloomberg then. has consistently stood behind that super micro uh, story. This is, this is the thing. You've got Bloomberg standing firm and you've got 
unprecedented denials from everyone else in the story. So I'm... Uh, I know we've argued about this earlier on. I don't on, think Bloomberg's lying. I think... Uh, I don't think Bloomberg's necessarily lying. I think some people may have over-egged the pudding and sort of put too much in there. Well, um, I think if they put too many onions in the pudding, that could be... <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I mean... <laughs> Bloomberg is a reliable data, you know, reliable magazine. It is, and they wouldn't put something like this on their cover. Anyway, yeah. we've litigated this over and over over the last three weeks, and, and it, no one knows. No. But I, I Until imagine... Until we find the chip. If this happened, mm. somebody else with a super micro motherboard that's been doctored will step forward, unless, unless a big guy from the FBI has been knocking on everybody's door saying... It would be a mistake for you in any way to reveal <laughs> that you have discovered this. Nice because life you've got there, be a shame yeah, if anything right? happened to it. Right? I think but, that the, 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 but surely the, then, everyone must have been going to their super micro boards and checking to see if, there, yes. if there's an extra chip on there, and no one has said anything. So, yeah, yes. either it's a gagging order or it didn't. I think it's it a gagging there. order. And I, and I think, first of all, Silicon Valley, even we, for, look, here's the bottom line. We know this stuff happens. Yeah. It happens in the supply chain. It happens in transit. We know this. The, we, the U.S. does it. Mm. It's been discovered. Snowden revealed the U.S. Yep. does it. So we know this happens. Mm. It's been happening for at least a decade. Yes. But it's in everybody's interest, including these Silicon Valley companies and every other, that no one know that it's happening mm. because it would completely jeopardize the trust. In Don't the look behind chain. the curtain type thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I, now I get what you're saying on that. So I think what happened is Bloomberg had a big story and mm. they but they but they said something that everybody else has agreed no no this must this is the story that must not be named the only the only thing that makes me slightly nervous about bloomberg is they do have a policy of paying bonuses to journalists based on how much their stories move the market which well, provides a market. very perverse disincentive <laughs> that is not a good one because it's no. super micro yeah yeah all right well mm. i if if it happened i figure at some point there'll be some confirmation yeah. somewhere somehow and I kind of hope there is a confirmation because the journalists involved have put their reputations on the line. Absolutely. Well, Bloomberg has. Yeah. You know, I mean, seriously. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, sad. Uh, by the way, when we oh. talk to Kyle, we should ask him about this Bloomberg thing because that's mm. the whole point of the Purism Librem laptop. Yeah. The phone they're going to be coming up with and the security key they've announced is you can't trust the supply chain. Yeah. Right? You can't trust anybody. <laughs> Only the paranoid survive. It's, yeah. the, it's the fundamental thing of Silicon Valley. It's funny that the CEO of Intel was the guy who wrote the book called Only yeah. the Paranoid Survive. I know, I know. Um, all right, all ones. right, all right. One more story, and it's a sad story. So, yeah. frowny face. Paul Allen passed away at the age of 65. As somebody in his 60s, that's by itself sad. Well, particularly, but I mean, he's, this was his third bout of cancer, yeah. and he, he beat it twice. And we brilliant, were all brilliant guy. He was the guy... If you saw Triumph of the Nerds, mm -hmm. who uh, he he had gone to high school with Bill Gates, Lakeside High School. They were programmers together. Yep. They worked together. Bill Gates goes off to Harvard. Uh, Alan doesn't. He goes to Massachusetts for an, uh, another school. Yep. Uh, and sees the cover story on I think it was Popular Mechanics for the Mitz Altair kit computer. So and rushes over. <laughs> rolls it up and rushes to to Bill Gates' dorm room at, at Harvard and slaps him with it. Says, Bill, wake up. You got to drop out. We got to write basic. And in We're fact, missing the boat. Yeah. Yep. Talks Bill Gates into dropping out of Harvard, mm. to forming Microsoft. They do write basic for the mitts out there. They form a company called Microsoft in Albuquerque, New mm. Mexico, eventually moved to Seattle. Uh, so he's one of the founders of Microsoft, had a huge amount yeah. of stock. It had oh. a 40% share of Microsoft. Yeah. Bill had 60, he had 40. Uh, no one ever said Bill was dumb. No, know? Bill tried to talk him down, apparently, and Alan said, no, no, I'm keeping my 40. Alan did all, all the hard work. Well, know? that's what Bill was saying. Now that you've, so, so in 1982, yeah. uh, Paul Allen gets a diagnosis of Hodgkin's disease, mm -hmm. and, which is a, a form of cancer, yeah. and, uh, and leaves, retires, mm -hmm. and takes his 40% with him. Bill calls him up and says, Paul, you're not doing anything. I should get more. Paul says, the hell with you. I'm yeah, keeping it. I made it. <laughs> his fortune by at the time of his death was, was worth more than $20 billion. He made he, out like a bandit on AOL. He was one of the early investors in AOL. Well, uh, and it's not merely that. He mm -hmm. also was very philanthropic. He built mm -hmm. the beautiful uh, rock and roll museum in uh, Seattle with yep. the Frank Gehry melting guitar building. It's now called Mopop. Uh, I've been there. It's an incredible yep. thing. You should see it. 
He owned the Trailblazers and the Seahawks. He, he was uh, very much into sports. He had three huge yachts, giant yachts, one with a what? submarine. I know one with a yellow submarine. That's so cute. I really like, he was a rock. I want to be a billionaire so I can it do stuff like that. He also had a recording yeah. studio in the basement with a full time staff waiting for him to come down and lay down some tracks. Oh, he was a very good guitarist. And most interesting to me, he was the owner of Tech TV. Mm -hmm. Bought Tech TV from uh, ZD and SoftBank uh, yeah. in uh, 2000. Uh, sold it a few years later after having lost several hundred million. Sorry about that. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but but uh, he, I only met him once. I didn't really have a mm. chance to hobnob with him. But I remember him as a very uh, engaging but shy guy. Yeah, He's very shy. I've heard that as well. It's although in an argument he could stand his own. There's a famous tale of when the first space shuttle launched. Uh, Alan wanted to go and see it, so he and a couple of Microsofties went down to watch the launch. Came back and Gates screamed at him because he'd abandoned his, his job for 24 hours and he was he gave as good as he got and he was like look this is never going to happen again I've already put in more hours than you know than almost anyone else in the world on this so please bill shut up <laughs> 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 like... what a guy I, what a terrible loss uh, third bout with cancer mm. and this one got him uh, at the age of uh, 65 it was uh, Hodgkin, an non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We've all got to go, but he pounded an awful lot into an awful lot of yeah. life into a short period. Yeah. And by the way, uh, signed on in 2010 to Bill Gates and Warren Buffett's yes. giving philanthropic agreement, agreeing to, get, to get, give away more than half of his fortune yeah. to charity before his death. So a, a, a lot of good mm. uh, in a lot of areas uh, from Paul Allen. He will be missed. Very much so. We're going to take a look at the Pixel 3 in just a moment. But first, let's, uh, let's get a word from our sponsor, and it's appropriate. In this day and age where you can't trust anyone, you ought to be using a password manager. I think we all agree on that. And if you're going to use a password yep. manager, you should use LastPass. And I use LastPass. I've been using it since it started about 10 years ago. Uh, Steve Gibson actually talked to Joe Segrist. Joe showed him the, the, the source code. Mm -hmm. And Steve said, thumbs up, and it is now a LastPass user. We started using it a few years ago, about five years ago, for our company, LastPass Enterprise, because... If you think about it, it's one thing to secure your passwords, and I'm sure everybody yeah. watching this show knows to secure their passwords. But if you have a business, that means you have employees who have the keys to their kingdom, and they may be writing it on Post-it notes and putting it on the screen. <laughs> they may be, in fact, most employees, more than half, share passwords with other employees and non-employees. They know the login to all your servers, to your bank accounts, you got to keep it secure, and LastPass helps you do that. LastPass Enterprise has over 100 policies you can use to, you know, things like I can share passwords. We have uh, folders in LastPass Enterprise, so we have an accounting passwords. We have ops passwords. We can share them without them actually getting the password, so they can mm -hmm. use it for a login, but they don't have access to it. They can't change it. They can't copy it. That's beautiful. You can use two-factor. In fact, we require two-factor. LastPass's authenticator is great for employees because it's not a six-digit number like a lot of authenticators. It actually pops up a notification on your phone that you say, yeah, that was me right. logging into the bank account. It's okay. These are the kinds of things that really secure your enterprise. And with password resets, because people forget their passwords. All the time. Yeah, that's really important. Russell's in charge of that. We have master password requirements. You can't use monkey123. Nope, mm, not well, going to happen. I can't, I, I can't use nope. quality as a nope. password. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I actually trust LastPass so much, we store everything in there. Database logins, SSH keys. I keep my passport images, my driver's license, all the social security numbers, the company's EIN. It's all stored in LastPass. I'm kind of telling people where I put all this stuff. I was going to be very, very careful on this. It's <laughs> all in there. But the thing is, the LastPass vault is is visible to no one. It's decrypted only on device. LastPass doesn't have access to it. No one has access to it but me. Uh, we just think it's great. If you use Microsoft Active Directory, your employees will really love it because then they only have one password. Remember, you can actually use AD to log in, which is great. The LastPass password generator creates, creates really long, strong, truly random passwords. Uh, we require that, so, so that's really important. Good password policy is absolutely essential. If you use iOS 12 now, they've added autofill. So uh, last, uh, I always installed LastPass first when I get a new phone or a new device mm -hmm. anyway. But with autofill, it's great because I can set up all my apps so fast. Android Audio, Oreo, and Ups also support that. Uh, no more copying and pasting. It just fills it in for you. LastPass Premium for your personal use. You should be using it. Or LastPass Family for family use. That's what we use at home. That way I can share relevant passwords with Lisa. Plus, the emergency access feature means that should something happen to me, if I become disabled, she can get access mm -hmm. to my 
key logins, which I think is really important. It's something you this is something that which I think we're going to have to see, we're going to have to sort out, because a lot of people are dying without leaving their passwords exactly. in a way that you can get. And, and then you're your state can't be settled. Yeah, quite literally. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's a key point. We've got yeah. to get this sorted out. That's in LastPass. It's called emergency access. It has a, a, a good mechanism for keeping you know, hostile spouses from stealing <laughs> the passwords, but it really works. I really love it. Look, 16 million people, including me, trust LastPass at home. More than 43,000 businesses trusted at work. You need to tell your boss, or if you're the boss, you need to do this. Use LastPass Enterprise or LastPass Teams for teams of 50 or fewer. It's so critical. LastPass.com slash twit has everything you need to know. LastPass.com slash twit. This is one ad I always think of as a public service announcement. Yes. Everybody needs to know about LastPass. All right, here it is, the Pixel 3. Um, oh, by right. the way, right now it's in the slideshow mode. So I have, this is, uh, I chose some, uh, some, these are my kids. I chose some uh, pictures from <laughs> Class Clown, Henry Laporte. I wonder, <laughs> wonder how he got that title. Yeah. This is the dash, this is a kind of a nice feature. It turns it into a photo frame. In fact, it works uh, on the Pixel stand sideways as well. It charges and will do the photo frame sideways. And I mentioned it has that alarm feature. That's really nice. So unfortunately, this is way overpriced. The Pixel stand is seventy dollars, uh, but it's it's standards compliant, so you can pick your it's own. It's a cheat charger. In yeah. fact, we just showed it works with the iPhone and the Samsung yeah. Galaxy Note. So I like that. Let's talk about the phone a little bit <laughs> when you compare it to a Samsung or an Apple a 10s. It really is very similar, both in size. Uh, and screen. These are. This is a Samsung screen now on the uh, Pixel 3 XL, uh, which means it's a beautiful OLED screen. Now, let me show you though the notch, because that's the one thing. Yeah, I've people heard... are really upset about is the notch. Now, let me let me well, turn on the iPhone. Over themselves, because if you compare the two, the iPhone notch is wider but shorter. Yeah. The Pixel 3 notch is narrower. People were complaining about how wide it was. Well, not that wide. It's a little longer, but. Remember, it is not only just two cameras. Most screens now have notches because in order to do yeah. uh, all the way to the edge, you've got to do that. It's got not only two cameras, you can see it, but it's got a speaker in here, and there's a, a matching chin, which other people don't like. Well, uh, look, do you want the, speakers or not? Yeah, speakers, speakers which work or not. Or not so yeah. Get over it. Yeah. You know? In fact, <laughs> let, me, uh, let me play something on the speakers because I actually think the speakers sound... Ooh, uh, Ramstein? No, <laughs> just the twit theme. Ah, okay. But the, the speakers are loud. They are left-right stereo. Mm. I don't think bass is huge, but you can hear that over no, there pretty that, loud, that's right? That's a really good set of speakers. I mean, if somebody fired that up on my way into work and on the train, I would go over and slap be them. be mad. <laughs> yeah. It's fine, though, for podcasts, for audiobooks, yeah. for watching YouTube videos. Oh, you could even have it in the that's car what seat speakers, beside you. Yeah. That's what speakers on a phone are for. You're yeah. not expecting... Now, admittedly, there's no headphone jack, so you're going to be using either the the, the wired Type C headphones that yeah. come with it, which are, by the way, quite good. Hmm. They now have a little loop that goes in your ear, kind of like the Pixel Buds did. Oh, okay. Yeah, which makes them fairly secure in the ear. The sound quality is uh, pretty good. They're, yeah. You know, they're they're give me headphones, but they're not bad for headphones. Unlike Apple, Google does continue to put a dongle in here that adapts Type C to as they should. I mean, if you're going to yeah, take Apple, away stop the... doing that. I know. It's utterly shameless. It drives, it, you know, it's just like, give us more money now. <laughs> Google includes a 12-watt uh, fast charger in here with Type-C to Type-C. Uh, they include also an adapter. And that's actually one of the things I really like about the Pixel phones. You can use the Type-C connector to your old phone mm -hmm. or with the adapter to almost any phone and automatically copy data over. And yeah. It's a very quick, easy, painless uh, setup. I was able to activate it. In fact, because I'm on Google Fi, I didn't even need to change the SIM. Mm. I opened my Pixel 2 and I said, there's no SIM. How is this working? Well, it's a <laughs> SIMless design if, if your carrier supports it, as Google Fi does. Uh, that makes it very easy to transfer everything over. Mm. I really think they've solved the screen issues. You remember there were a lot oh, of Oh, the blue wash screens with yeah. the blue Pixel 2. Yeah, yeah. And, and I remember when I scrolled on the Pixel 2, there was a lag in it that made it kind of rubbery. They've solved all that. This is a Samsung display this time, and I think it's uh, a very nice display. Display made degrees uh, said it was one of the top yeah. displays, maybe the best display it had used. But really, if you're going to get this, you get it for a couple of reasons. You get it because it's Google's, so it's yeah. going to be secure. It's it's the latest you, version of I was going to say, you get the latest and greatest security updates, and you get Project Fi, and you get, yeah. And you don't get a lot of cruft. You don't get Samsung's TouchWiz stuff. Now, you may like that. Uh, yeah. Some people do. I like the idea of having a really, uh, just kind of a pure phone on here. Yeah, you, this, I'm the same when it comes to phones. I want the minimum amount of bloatware on there, yeah. and, you know, 
good stuff. And you stuff. can see I have the September 5th patch, the most recent patch on there. And that's one other good thing about having a Pixel phone is you're guaranteed to have the latest security yeah. patches on here. And you get them for, before anyone else. In fact, that's another thing Google's addressing the security issues with Android by, like Apple and Samsung, having a secure Enclave hardware yeah. security in there. Google uh, calls that chip their Titan chip. Indeed, they were making a big thing about this this yeah. week. I think that, uh, you know, this would be a good one for Kyle to ask him what he thinks about yeah. that. The idea, though, of a secure hardware-based Enclave is keys can be stored in there and not accessible yeah. uh, to the outside world. I mean, world. Apple have been doing this for a while, but Google now has, has finally joined them. I mean, they've had similar chips to the Titan in the Chromebooks for a right. while, but this is the first time they put them in the phone. And it's important when you're using biometrics to unlock a phone, as, as here you're using mm -hmm. a fingerprint reader, you don't want that fingerprint image to get accept, be accessible to anybody outside the Absolutely phone. Absolutely not. You want to no. lock that in there. Uh, this, by the way, is now an all-glass back. This is a... T textured glass back. Yeah, Some have complained about scratches on that. The glass back means it can do uh, charging, wireless charging. Oh, sure, but at the same time, if you drop it, that thing's going to... Yeah. That, that's, that, that's what happened to my, my first Pixel, is that the back got so cracked up because I kept on dropping it. As with any modern phone. Mm, yeah. You're going to want a case. Nowadays, yeah. oh, no. you're going to want if, a case. If you're using a smartphone without a case, as I was, I yeah. had only myself to blame. Yeah. You can squeeze the bottom, as before, to uh, launch the Google Assistant. Some people like that feature. You can turn it off if you don't like it. That's called Active Edge. And that'll work through a phone, through most phone cases as well. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, it works quite well. Mm. Three colors, black, white, and pink, although they're called <laughs> clearly white, just black, and not pink. Yeah. And I'm kind of mad at myself. I wasn't man enough to, to order the pink phone. I really should have. My masculinity was in doubt. I didn't want a pink <laughs> phone, so I got a black phone. That's kind of boring, but it matches all the other boring phones Look yes. how much phones look alike these days. They're it all does just... look like an Alabama family tree, but no, <laughs> they're all just curvy glass screens, all bezel, uh, bezeled screens. The real thing that you we're talking about here with the Pixel, I think the real differentiator is the camera. Mm. And I was blown away. Now, yesterday... You uh, showed me some of that stuff. Yeah, Lisa and I went into yeah. town. We've talked a lot about this. Not By the way, not all the features that Google has touted are in the phone yet. They will come along in time, yeah. and some of them will come to the Pixel 2. Mm. So that 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 special DSP that's in here for, for, for imaging yeah. is is in the Pixel 2. Uh, the, it's an older one, but it can do many of the same things. The, the real key to understand this is like all camera phones, you have a very small space, so the lens isn't mm. going to be large and it's not going to be super sophisticated. Yeah. What Google's saying is it doesn't matter because we can take the imaging we're getting out of here and process it in such a way, computational photography, that the images look really good. Plus, the f chip in here, which is a, an 845 Qualcomm Snapdragon, is fast enough that we can capture many images yes. at every time you press the button and use those stacked images to do a lot. For instance, because your hand moves ever so slightly mm -hmm. during the milliseconds between shots, they actually can use parallax. It's like they can actually use like these multi-phasic uh, yeah. pixels. They don't have it in here, but they actually can get lots more images. They put a phenomenal amount of work into that. It's really yes. impressive. Uh, watch our interview last week uh, with uh, um, uh, Ars. And I'm sorry, DP Review, because they mm -hmm. did some great uh, work on this. Let me pull up some photos, and I'll just show you a couple of things. What is missing uh, currently from this is the top shot feature. That's that's coming at some point. But the night shots are very good. Uh, this comes from multiple images. Again, oh, you're stacking them. You're doing HDR. Uh, it is. It, this is at late night in San Francisco. We went up to the city yesterday to take pictures. Uh, there's the Apple Store. Yeah. The, I sh this is a this is a, a good example of a darkened alleyway. I mean, this was really dark. If I zoom in on the image on the graffiti way in the back, maybe if you pixel peep it a little bit. It's it's not perfect. But bear in mind that's a mobile phone it's camera. In the, it's in, in the, the dark. dark, thirty feet away. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was actually pretty impressed with the capabilities uh, of this camera. Let me show you the other thing that is a, a big issue with camera phones is zoom. Mm. Uh, you know, with camera phones, unlike a, a, a you know a DSLR, you have one lens. It's usually a wide, roughly twenty-eight millimeter lens. This is the shot from the street in Chinatown of the three block distant Transamerica pyramid. Um, now, watch this, because on the screen, you pinch to zoom. Yep. 
or I guess, what's the opposite of pinch? Unpinch. Um, splay. <laughs> splay. <laughs> you splay to zoom. So I splayed it to zoom in. This is the same distance, but zoomed in, and I would say that zoomed in five, six times. Yeah. And I have to say, the image quality is quite good. Now, I'll zoom, I'll zoom in a little bit more on this, and you can see it does get a little bit soft in some of the details. But considering how much you're zooming, that's not bad. Normally, with a camera phone, zoom means blow up the picture with all the accompanying pixelation and distortion. Mm. And this does a pretty darn good job. It's capturing multiple images. Some of them, when it's uh, dark at night, as low as a quarter of a second. You can't hold a handhold a quarter of a second. But it gives you the chance to get really great night images. Now, I've turned off motion. Almost all of these were shot with motion on. Right. Motion degrades the photos on the iPhone. It actually gives you a lower quality image. but doesn't seem to do that on the Pixel 3. These are late night shots. Uh, now, remember, when, when we're looking at these shots that there are some things that are very bright, like that sign, mm -hmm. some things that are not. The sky it's was equal, almost dark. Yeah, it's equaled them out quite nicely. This is HDR, and it's doing a spectacular job of the HDR. So this was at dusk when you were taking it. Yeah. Oh, well, let me show you some portraiture, too, because I think the portrait mode is really excellent. Now, uh, 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 according to uh, Google with the portrait mode, uh, you see it's got two images here. This is the portrait image. And, uh, and this is the uh, standard image, I can actually change the depth of field. Let me click for more options. Uh, maybe that, that doesn't say here. You can on the phone, and I think maybe they haven't added this yet to uh, Google Photos, but on the phone, you can change the background uh, focal length. You can actually tap any part of the picture, say, focus on this. Mm. And that really gives you, I think, some, some great imagery. This was a uh, Chinese Kodo player. <laughs> <laughs> There's my wife and a giant bulldog. There's me and my new friend. Uh -huh. This is actually a good example. You can see I've blurred out the background. Yeah. Give it a very nice bouquet. That's a, great, that's a great picture. I Honestly, I am really impressed with this phone. The detail, the crispness of the imagery, the quality of the colors, the quality of the exposure, even in low light. Uh, this is as good as I've ever seen. I, I shot a lot of pictures, similar pictures with the iPhone. Uh, 10s and uh, l later I'll put up some uh, comparison images uh, for you. Here's the cable car uh, turnaround on Powell Street. It's pitch black. I mean, it is dark. There's there's light in pools, but there's enough light, I guess, for the phone to figure out. And it's doing uh, HDR photography to get uh, everything uh, pretty nicely exposed. I am actually tempted at this point to t take my next trip. Normally, I take very nice mm -hmm. cameras. Do an experiment and just take a Pixel 3 XL and see if the imagery I get, I think it will be just as satisfying. I'm, I'm really excited about what's happening here. The only thing that worries me about Pixel phones is that Google's got this thing about artificial, artificial obsolescence. Because how long are they going to carry on supporting this? I've heard two years, possibly three years. But, you know, well, that seems true. to me to be, to be a very odd way to go about things. You should you be able to use devices as long as you like, yeah. within reason. I mean, Windows is supported for 10 years at a time. Yeah. Um, um, and but I have to say, this is in general kind of the idea with smartphones is two years and out. Yeah, you keep your phone for a long time. I've still got a flip phone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I mean, use it that often, apart from they, Defcon. But that's... they've really pushed people in the direction of you know yeah. you want. In fact, all the companies now uh, offer Apple's you doing it. upgrades yeah. where every year you get the newest phone and you just yeah. continue to pay a monthly fee. And I think that that's in response to what consumers want, which is, well, look, it's gonna be $32 a month for the rest of my life, and I'll always have the latest iPhone. The only reason I don't do that is because, I, what if I break it, and I'm, yeah. then I'm out of a lot of money. Uh, you but get also, Apple I mean, you're a tech guy, happens. you need to be trying out the latest I, and, and I'm, phones, Look, so. these are my three current phones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Pixel 3, the Apple 2, uh, I mean, sorry, the Apple 10. You'd have to wear uh, three holsters. Yes, yeah. Max, and the Note 9. Well, there's another one coming on Friday. In fact, we'll have our review uh, next week. Mm -hmm. The iPhone XR is ah. coming out. So I will be a four-phone family <laughs> all by myself. No, I really like the Pixel 3. It mm. is going to be probably my daily driver. I'm very impressed with it. Yeah, I think I may have one. to get one. Yeah, really nice. Battery life, it's got a fairly small battery, 29, 15 yes, smaller milliamp battery hours. Than the Pixel 2, as I saw from the iFixit. Uh, for, the, uh, for the regular and 3430 the milliamp hours. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, you know, if it's, I haven't had it long enough to know whether it's going to be enough. Nowadays, most of the phones I have are roughly the same. Yeah. 
towards the end of the day, they might be getting a little low. And but you've always got the fast charge as well. So you can plug it in that's for 15 right. minutes, you'll get enough to get your That's home. exactly right. 18 watt fast charging. Uh, and of course, Qi wireless charging. Uh, let's see, what else? Bluetooth 5, it's got, of course, GPS and Glasnost and all the, all the usual features. I am very excited about new camera features coming like Top Shot. But you could see with the stuff that I already it's got, it, it really is pretty good. You do get unlimited online storage in Google Photos of exactly. original quality images when you buy a Pixel phone, and I think that's a nice feature. Through 20-something, 20 2020 or something. Um, there's a few other things that flip to shush. A lot of phones have mm -hmm. had that in the past where you flip it over, it shuts it up. Yep. Uh, the, oh, I should mention the digital well-being, which is now fully implemented. I've turned that on. When I go to bed at night, the phone stops all notifications, doesn't even put them on the screen. So there's right. no temptation. And it makes the screen black and white. So they're really, the phone is just like, I don't want it that. No, I think that's a great idea because yeah. I'm getting heartily sick of waking up in the middle of the yep. night when the phone goes yep. ping. Yep. Yep. My wife's even more sick of it. But <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the Pixel uh, 3. The Pixel 3 itself is $799. The 3XL... Eight ninety nine, and that is for the sixty four gig version. There is for a hundred bucks more a yeah. one hundred twenty eight gig version. Four hundred forty three. You're going to be storing range. all your stuff in the cloud anyway, so you know. yeah. Four hundred uh, for the smaller phone. Four hundred forty three pixels per inch. This phone is a five hundred. I don't know why I would need this. Five hundred twenty three pixel per inch. Uh, At this point, display. it's it's just a it's person, crazy. Uh, it's yeah, crazy bragging talk. Rights contest. Crazy talk. Uh, there it is. Pixel three XL. Mm. And you don't have to blur my phone number. Everybody knows it. I don't answer the phone. <laughs> Actually, there's one new feature in here I haven't had a chance to try yet. But if you get a call that's suspicious, mm. there's a button you can push on there and say, please screen this call. And you can it will actually pick up the call saying, mm. Leo's screening calls right now. Who are you and what do you want? Nice. And then you can either listen to it or send them directly to voicemail. I think that that is a really nice feature. <laughs> uh, no one's calling me. Call me now so I can try it, will you? Everybody? <laughs> no. Be please. careful what you wish for. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, next, we're going to join Kyle Rankin, uh, Rankin of Purism. I am really, we've had Purism on to talk about the Librem yep. laptop. We reviewed the, lamp, the laptop when it first came out. We're very impressed it's with it. It's pretty neat. Now they've got a feature. Even more important, you can take the Purism key, mm -hmm. and you can use it for your logins, as you would a YubiKey, but it will also validate the integrity yes. of the laptop itself. Which is absolutely vital. Kyle will explain in just a minute. Our show today brought to you by WordPress. So I have been using WordPress for my blog since it came out. Since Matt most Mullenweg. of the world uses WordPress. Yeah. 31% of the world uses WordPress. Almost every website you visit, one in three, are WordPress websites. That's kind of mind-boggling. Uh, but I was doing my own self-hosted version of WordPress, and I, I got kind of lazy, right? Mm. Then I found out about WordPress.com. They do all the work. They take care of the hosting. They keep the software secure. They update the plugins. They do give you hundreds of uh, templates and plugins to choose from, so you're not in any way sacrificing. And it's less expensive less expensive than self-hosting as little as four dollars a month plus you've got that great 24 7 support team they that they, they will help you at any time that's fantastic wordpress.com has hundreds of designs so if you're a business or an individual you can make a website with just a few clicks that matches your your aesthetic your ethos i chose wordpress.com because there were no limits i i own it it's not like Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't own my site. Jack, Jack Dorsey doesn't own my site. Yeah, you can have Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. But ever since I shut down my social sites and post, I'm posting almost every day now mm. to WordPress. It's so easy. The WordPress app made it when I was traveling easy to do my posts, get content up there even on 3G. I just love that. WordPress powers 31% of all the websites in the world. And it's really no surprise when you add up all the great features. Go now to wordpress.com slash NSS. You'll get 15% off any new plan purchase. wordpress.com slash NSS. Get 15% off any new plan. I just love WordPress. Everybody ought to have a personal site that they, they can call their own, that it's their data. I upload all the videos and photos to WordPress. I can get them from WordPress at any time. I control it, and I think that's really important. WordPress dot com slash nss we thank them for their support i we have moved over ian to indeed say, 
to, to the amazing levitating table. Yes. Right. Is this at a height you like? Would you like to we raise can it or put, lower? We can put it up a bit if you'd like. <laughs> or lower it down again. Oh, I love that spirits, feature. spirits, talk to me. Uh, we're about ready now to talk about the Purism laptop. Kyle, it's great to see you. Welcome. Uh, how long have you been at uh, Librem? So I just uh, joined officially full-time in January, but nice. I've been behind the scenes advising for almost since the beginning. Kyle Rankin is the, you're the chief security yeah. officer. Right. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's <laughs> means you're in charge of keeping the most secure laptop in the world secure. Yeah, just, you know, small lifts. Just no, a no little pressure, bit. No pressure. No pressure, <laughs> no pressure at all. No, no. You, were, you went to DEF CON there in City Yeah, we were, Def Def we were at DEF CON together. Nice, yeah. We've been there the last couple. I've been, well, it must have been last, uh, every oh, year, I would yeah. have thought. Yeah. So tell me what, why Librem exists. Sure. Um, so, you know, our idea is that there's a lot of options out there for both hardware, software, um, but a lot of them don't really respect the customer. And we so know our, that. Yeah. We know mm. that. Everybody's all upset about Windows 10 phone and home, right? <laughs> um, yes. You're yeah. right. You're the, cu you're the product in many cases. Absolutely. Yeah, and so, and a lot of them have financial incentives to do that, and it, so it makes sense. Um, for us, we don't necessarily agree with that. And so the idea is to have a laptop that respects the customer and their freedom. So, mm. so and what's interesting, this is Free Software uh, Foundation in pr approved hardware. That means there is no non-free software on here. Mm. Yeah, they've, they've approved the OS, and we're, there's one little tiny, the, the ME is still waiting for the hardware The Intel to management blessed. engine is Man, still yeah. on here? It's, oh, yeah, yeah. You uh, can't get a, a, a little smidgen of it. That's we not your fault. It. It's you not can't, my fault. It's but, built into the thing, right? What are you going to do? You well, have Intel chips in here. Yeah, so, but we, you know, we both neuter it, so there's this uh, HAP bit that you can set that says, please disable, and Good. because we don't trust that. You'd like um, to take we, the hardware out. Yeah, so yeah. we also um, wipe it all, almost all of the modules that come into the ME, we wipe. And nice. so there's like a, just Excellent. a little snip at the bare minimum. We've tried wiping more and it doesn't boot. So the <laughs> bare minimum, like well, something like 96% of it is zeroed out. This is about I, as good as you're going to get. As good yeah, as you're you gonna get. you're using know. core boot. You're not using anybody else's boot system. That's right. It's all free software bias. So you can inspect, you can audit everything. And that's what it is, is, you know, we don't, we're not saying you have to trust us, just like we're not saying you right. trust anybody else. We we have reasons why you should trust us, but even mm. if you don't, you can go through our entire all of our code. You can inspect things. Um, it's all out there in the open. And because all the hardware on here has free software drivers for it, mm -hmm. while you have your own Debian-based OS, you could use pretty much any Linux or BSD OS on here, and they'd work fine. Oh yeah, yeah. If it, if it works. <clears throat> Purely, purely free software drivers, then you yeah. can pretty much anything else. That's always yeah. a problem when you buy a laptop and put Linux oh, on it. Oh, tell me about it. I, know, <clears throat> I mean, but really good news about Intel, because I, for one, am sick about writing stories about ME broken yet again. Yeah, you know, yeah the management engine is terrible. Oh, it's awful. <clears throat> but there is a, a weak link here, mm. and it's the evil maid. What I, if I leave my nice, pure Librem Purism laptop in the hotel room and I go out and have a beer and come back and somebody's gotten in my room and modified this. How do I know that this is not And modified? I've had this happen to me in China. I left my laptop in the room, went down, had dinner, came back and it was switched on. And it's just, it's, you, great, you now, I've now got to junk the laptop because yeah. you cannot trust it. Yeah. They could have put stuff in the firmware on the battery or into the BIOS. Or is just, there a defense against something like that? that well, yeah, I mean, that's, so that's, that's sort of what the problem we're trying to solve because if you, if someone were to modify the BIOS or mm -hmm. put, install a rootkit, <clears throat> since that's the very first code that executes, you can't. What, how you can can't you detect even, a rootkit. How can you yeah. test it? Yeah, yeah. How can you test it? And so the idea is, so we've been partnering with uh, Trammell Hudson, this gentleman who created a system called Heads, and so it runs on top of Core Boot. It's again free software. In fact, it uses reproducible builds, so you don't even have to trust Heads if you. Were, worry about something being tampered with along the way. You go get the source you code. You can go get the source build code, it. build it, and match it, and it's fine. Yeah. Um, so we've been working with that to get that on our laptops. Well, and this is so timely with this uh, yeah. super micro exactly. hack. Whether you believe it or not, we know mm. the supply chain is no, no, at risk. No, no, absolutely. And we know from Snowden mm -hmm. that the NSA will intercept stuff in transit. So where do you have these made, though? They're made in China, I'm sure, right? Yeah, I mean, components of it are for sure. I mean, yeah. but, but put together and assembled here in the U.S. You oh, assemble okay. it in the U.S. Under a, in a factory under your control. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's nice. I Excellent. like that. Excellent. Yeah, that's another uh, good thing. It's so difficult. you've got heads on here. Heads is it's kind of like doing a hash, right? Of, yeah. It's a secure boot system. Yeah, it's, it's like secure boot. I mean, the main difference is with secure boot, it's saying 
you have to run executables that Microsoft has signed right. and blessed, and you can right. only do that, right? right? And so um, some people that use Debian, for instance, if you go to a secure boot system, Debian doesn't have an executable. I turn off inside. secure boot, right? So you have to turn it off, right? So it's either it's one, or, it's either on or off. You either right. are secure or you're not. Right. And so we, you know, that sort of doesn't comply with how we like our philosophy behind that. We want the user to sort of own the keys to their hardware. So normally, when this boots up, uh, heads will check, make sure nothing has been modified and then say on the screen it's okay? Yeah, so wait, the way that it can, you can trust it, because if someone hacks this, it could just say, yeah, everything's great. You know, yeah, because that, that, that's <laughs> yeah. a screen, they, they, they hacked it, right? Yeah. The yeah. rootkit could say, oh, by the way, say everything's okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so the way that this works is um, this laptop has a TPM chip in it, Okay. and so when you turn on the machine, the BIOS sends measurements over to the TPM. If they match what was set up previously, it unlocks this shared secret um, that gen between you and, without the Librem key, between you and your phone. Mm -hmm. so your phone um, has a secret. Your phone has a secret. So when you <clears> first <throat> set it up, it puts up a QR code on the screen. You take a picture, and you have that same six-digit code if you've ever logged into a website with that. So if system. anybody modifies anything, that code will be... That, it'll, it'll be different, it'll, yeah. You know, like, oh, that's fishy. Uh, okay, and that TPM, the Trusted Platform Module, is basically what we were talking about earlier, a secure yeah. enclave. It's a chip yeah. where stuff is stored securely. And we trust TPM? Um, reasonably enough, I mean, it's small, it's independent from the CPU, you know, I mean, in some cases, you know, free software people have been concerned about it in the past just because it's been used to lock out right. software, mm. but it doesn't have to be, you know, this is almost like the sort of the judo leverage this is, where you yeah. use the good the, TPM. Yeah, the good TPM, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so it doesn't have to be that way. Right. And so we, you know, you can <clears> wipe <throat> that out and take ownership of your own TPM I and use that. it for your own purposes. I love that. Yeah. Now, as a, as a naturally clumsy and forgetful person, what happens if I lose the USB key? Sure, yes. Yeah, well, so, actually, we haven't gotten to the USB key ah, yet. Okay, sorry. So, so right now, it's <laughs> going to be verified by the phone. And that was yeah. what's new. This is the Librem, uh, Purism Librem key. And it, it is, the idea here is this is like a, one of those traditional, like, uh, uh, Hardware locks, right? Like a YubiKey. Yeah. Uh, so it can generate a one-time password. Generate a one-time password. It can store your, you know, your GPG keys if you use that. I like that. I, I like mm. to keep my GPG key, G key in, a, in a piece of hardware like that. Yeah. And then you keep this on your person. Yeah, you put it in your pocket on your keychain. So the purse. evil maid would have to both pick your pocket and get mm -hmm. into your hotel room. Right. <laughs> right. All right. And so what does this do? Okay. So... Like you said, without integration with anything else, it acts like your standard security token stores your yeah, GPG I, keys. Like, I carry mine like with we me. we all have in our pockets. Yeah, I have yeah. My, my FIDO. This is, this is both, U, this is a YubiKey, but it does UTF and mm -hmm. a one-time password. Yours does not do UTF. Not yet, yeah. Yeah, okay. right now it doesn't. So we partnered with a company called NitroKey, who makes a security token okay. to make the Librem key. Okay. Um, so it, uh, it's open hardware. Nice. So, so right. it's and the firmware is is free software. Okay. And so. all of the user space software is also. That's the reason that we selected them. I mean, YubiKey is great, but that was something that we, you know, that's a principle that we stand behind. Yeah. So we wanted it to all be open. You you want it all to be out there. So, tell me how I would use this now to validate that my Purism laptop is uh, is secure. Sure. Okay. So you you know you leave the hotel room and you go have dinner and you come back mm -hmm. and now it's running. Yep. And you're concerned. Okay, so you turn it off and you plug in the key. Okay, okay. And now we turn it on. Yeah. And when it boots, because it's now talking to the TPM, which is a, you know, it's a, a slow-ish chip. It's not a big powerhouse of a chip. Right. So it's sending measurements back and forth. Heads is already running. It's already, yeah. already running. Now it's sending measurements back. And now if you look at the key, there's a nice little green LED. It might be hard to see, but I can see. see it. There's a blinking green yeah. light on there. That is essentially saying, okay, everything matches. Yeah, so what it's doing is the same thing your eyes would do with your phone. So on the screen, <laughs> you can see that there's a little six-digit code there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, know, if you were to ask the user, every time you turn on your computer, get your phone out, they're going to do it once or twice and then say, well, yeah. that's kind of a pain. I don't really want to deal with that and not do it. So we want to make it easier. So what we do is the same thing that's happening on the screen in your phone is happening between the computer and the key. The computer's authenticating itself to the key and proving it hasn't been tampered with. So it's sending that six-digit code over USB to the key. The key um, generates its own six-digit code based on the secret they both have. So if it matches, it blinks green. If it nice. doesn't match, it blinks red. Nice. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. It is, and that's a, a, a tremendously hand, a tremendously handy because honestly, you don't. On, you know, if you you can't have your laptop with you the whole time, so you need to have this kind of backup system, and the fact it's all open source makes it considerably more secure. I would have thought. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's the idea. So, you know, a lot of the other systems are saying it's e it's either the the firmware that's proving all of this is closed for <laughs> secure boot, or it's 
through some vendor and we're mm -hmm. saying, you know, we, it's all free software. Trust so you, no one. Yeah, you don't yes. have to trust even us, even right. though you, we're the vendor, you don't have to trust the vendor. You can take all of this and then say, I don't trust the TPM. You know, the mm -hmm. ideal with this is we will be able to set it all up at the factory. And right. so it's right. all ready to go. It's not hard. So it's but easy But if you're Mr. User. Robot, you're getting all of this and you're putting all new stuff you're on You're wiping it all out <laughs> You're wiping it and starting mm -hmm. from scratch. Yeah. Now, nothing's perfect, of course. There's probably no, no still attack is, vectors on yeah. this. But, but that's a heck of a lot better than a Windows or a Macintosh machine or uh, a Chromebook. Yes. Well, and we get, a, you know, we get a lot of customers that request, they, they live overseas, and they say, hey, I'm, I'm concerned about someone intercepting my laptop after I buy it, messing with it before it gets to us. And so you know, that's something we already deal with today, and sometimes we do extra. We have an anti-interdiction service that for people that request that we can do. This adds a whole other level to that. So mm. you send these under separate cover. Separate yeah. cover. We set it all up at the factory. We send one. Um, ideally, the best security protocol would be send, send the key first. Mm. They have the key, and then send the laptop second. Yeah. And then when they both arrive, you plug them in together. And if and they don't so match, they don't match. It doesn't match. Yeah. You jump up and down. And yeah. It's a red <laughs> spot, and you get the screen, <clears throat> screen going red as well. So there's an extra warning uh, uh, when things go wrong. Yeah, I mean, we can simulate that if you want. You want to, you want to mm. yeah, How much is, is the uh, is the Purism laptop? So the laptop, this is a 13-inch, so this starts at uh, 13.99. Not bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can, of course, upgrade it. And the uh, key? The key is uh, 59. Okay, 60 so, bucks. Yeah. So I have to say, Ian and I are both thinking about I've, maybe I've, we should I know, get I'm kind of thinking, thinking seriously yeah. about this now. Okay, uh, so, so now this is the code that you would use your phone to scan because you've changed... The knots. You've changed the secret key. Yeah. Mm. So the idea to simulate someone tampering <clears throat> is I'm going to change the secret key, but not plug the the Librem key in. So the laptop has one secret. The the Librem key has. We a didn't separate update secret. this key. You can do that though, right? Oh yeah. That's yeah. this is you know if you don't trust us, you get the everything Start up. Over, you can update the key. Or you lose the key. When you lose the key, you can still boot. You just hit enter. You just. You but know. what's happened is the evil maid has gotten in here, mm. has put some root kit on this, <laughs> yeah. and, the, and the keys no longer match. Right. So now I'm going to tell it to skip the key. It's going to try again. Just Should I put the key it. in? Go ahead and plug it in. Yeah. Okay. So we come in. Your laptop's on, Ian. Oh, no. <laughs> Quick, stick your Librem key in there, boot up, and we shall see what happens. Now, again, we can't trust this screen. But you can certainly <clears> see <throat> the flashing red light. But look, yeah. it's red. That means something's gone wrong. Somebody's been modified your, your, your boot. Yeah, and so if you're in, if you're a customer at home who this happens to, if you're sophisticated, you would then do some sort of you know forensics or something. Mm. The average person may not be able to do that. In which case, they could work with us yep. to you know do a factory sweep and make sure this nice and ah, clean. Interesting. You know, if you're an enterprise, it's even you know there's a lot more. You'll options. have an image that you mm. use. You have you could send it. To, you could have a customized message that says, "Hey, send this to IT." <laughs> you, you know, prevent someone from booting because do, they do just a lot can't, of yeah. enterprises buy the uh, Purism laptops. I mean, we're, we continue to get interest from a lot of. People. I bet. I want to do yeah. that, especially now that we have with the key. There's even more interest because there's, you know, a lot of developers already have a key on them anyway for yeah. signing code and everything. And so having something that's all a convenient bundle makes a lot of sense. You could use this for that signing key, absolutely, and yeah. everything else. Yeah, just don't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although if you lost this, you still have your phone. Yeah. If you lost it, you still have your phone, so you can verify this. If you right. lose it, you know, if you're putting your your private keys on there, then ideally you back them up somewhere else. Like That's what always has made yeah. me nervous about putting my GPG key on here. You got to have a secure store somewhere else in case yeah. it does. To yes, and it a, another physical location as well in case the house yeah. burns down. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? I like it. I we, like this a lot. You're going to take it to DEF CON next year? Should we uh, I've, I'm leave it, leave it you, lying did you, did you, around on the table? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the great thing is, you know, when I go to DEF CON, if I'm concerned about the network, I just hit the kill switch and the wireless is off. Yeah. Open my laptop up and, you know. Wow. I was going to say, you don't honestly use the DEF CON wireless network, do you? Yeah, I just turn it off and... Use it. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Excellent stuff. I'm thinking now about, about one of these. Now, yeah. <clears throat> what do you call the OS that you run on here? So we run Pure OS. Um, it's a, f a fork of Debian. It's based off of Debian. Um, Debian testing. The, Debian testing. Yeah. yeah, the main difference is we take Debian testing and we remove all um, non-free code. Right. Um, mm. So that's how we get the Free Software Foundation endorsement yeah. is by removing all of that. But other than that, if you're used to Debian, it's very, it's very similar. Right. Um, experience that the goal is for that to be super convenient. There is a Debian non-free ISO you can get that yeah. would, would probably also work if you wanted to yeah. stay pure. I love it that you don't need any of those non-free drivers. Mm. 
Right, yeah. So that they means it, if it, right. if it, I mean, if it works with no non-free drivers, then you know that you can put Love whatever. That. I mean, including cubes, which is also cubes is very That's what particular. You use. Yeah, I yeah. use cubes. And cubes it's very is a, everything sandbox. All processes are sandbox. So right. no process can talk to another process. There's no hacking possible. Yeah, you're a, you're paranoid. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. That's all. And this will work with cubes. Yeah, out yeah. of the box. Yeah. Really nice. Really nice. Excellent. Kyle Rankin, Chief Security Officer for Purism. They make the Librem laptop and now the Librem key, so you could be even more. And a secure. phone coming too, as well as I understand it. Phone coming too. Yeah. When, when is that going to be? Out? Um, it's coming out in April. So we're right now we're working on dev kits. So we have a, a huge interest from the developer community to as a, a nice Linux-based platform for a phone. So. Mm. So it's not Android. Not Android. Not Android. But there's plenty of those to choose from. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, so we're trying something different. And so we have a big developer community that's interested in work, oh, developing applications for yeah. the phone. And so we have dev kits right now that we're shipping out. They've, people have purchased. We're working on them now. And then in, in April, in the meantime, everyone will be writing applications. Right. Then in April, we come and launch the phone. Come back then, will you? Come back. Yeah, yeah I, I really want to see more. Because, I mean, you also, you've got the manufacturing experience. You're not going to run into the same problems that, that the Black Phone had, which, which got killed off just by... Yeah, you know, we talked to Phil Zimmerman. He, I yeah. felt bad for him because it was, a, of course, the right idea. Yeah. He said, it's just hard to build a phone. Yeah. It's a tough thing to do. Yeah, Hardware's a, hard. That's yeah. why they call it hardware. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Kyle Rankin, CSO of Purism. P-U-R dot I-S-M. P-U-R-I dot, dot S-M. S-M. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> P, there it is. Never know where to put that dot. P-U-R-I, Puri dot S-M. Yeah. Love it. Uh, we are going to go answer some mailbag questions in just a second. But okay. first, I'm really interested in this. Megan Maroney got the new Orbi voice. Yes. Which is, it's kind of an omnibus router. Does everything but the kitchen sink. She has a review. This is from her Know How episode. The first product that I reviewed is the Netgear Orbi voice. So that is these two little guys. Um, They're actually pretty big. <laughs> person, kind of big. Just to not yeah, steer I the mean, crowd. They're much smaller than, you know, th- than the, for a mesh network, they're rather large. Um, this is rather large. And that's because it's not only a satellite for a mesh network, it is also a voice assistant. So it has uh, Amazon voice services, otherwise known as Alexa built in. So if you're probably familiar with mesh networks, I use Eero at home. That's uh, one of our sponsors. And, you know, you have the the main, um, the main hub, uh, I guess you wouldn't really call it a hub, the, the main internet device. And then you have satellites all over your house. Right. And uh, they look often like little Google homes Nodes. or, yeah, yeah, but they, but mine don't do anything besides spread out the internet, which is great. Don't get me wrong. But so Netgear has this idea that you're going to extend your Wi-Fi and have a voice assistant and extend your wireless, wire, wired, extend your mm. Wi-Fi and your wired. So let me show you um, this voice assistant, which looks, it's big, but it is pretty, I think. It has that kind of... Yeah, it's pacing. got that modern aesthetic. So if you take a look, there's Ethernet cables here. So... I love this because I have my routers downstairs, but sometimes I want to do a Skype interview upstairs where my desk is and I want to be wired. I want to be connected wired and you can do that here. I mean, if your house doesn't have a wired connection all over your house, Mm -hmm. which mine does not. Um, So I really like this. It was super easy to set up. The Wi-Fi was great. Um, I mean, based on my sonic Wi-Fi, that was where it came from. This is also a a Harman Kardon speaker, so it's It's pretty good sound. So it's got boom. So So it'll sound on par with the Harman Kardon speaker uh, with Cortana built in, Mm -hmm. which is a great speaker. Mm -hmm. Great speaker. Let's see if I can uh, make it play music. Here's a station you might like, the Beatles on Amazon Music. Okay, I see we're sticking to a theme today. Do we feel like she's listening to us? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So what I like also is the controls on top here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, It has this nice volume. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Honestly, way easier than doing it on the Google Home Max. We did not um, pay for this, so uh, <laughs> it's about as long as we'll get of that. Um, but I think it sounds, I think it sounds great. I'm not an it audio does. Fi- audiophile, um, but it's giga, giga, I didn't mention they were gigabit Ethernet ports. Um, and the other thing it includes, so it's not just the voice assistant, it includes 
a circle. So um, if you're a parent, you might have heard of circle. They worked with Disney to create parental uh, yes, controls. Yes. And that was another device that I had set up in my house and it was like another thing. Um, but now circle is built right into this uh, network. So, which is great uh, if you do have kids that you want to make sure they, they don't have internet access after 10 p.m. or make sure that, you know, all kinds of things. They can't access certain things. Um, you know, every parental control is slightly flawed and, you know, actually talking to your kids and finding out what they're doing is the key. And, you know, I say that knowing that it's not as easy as it sounds, but Circle is a great, uh, a great little uh, mother's little helper, yeah. mother and father's little helper in terms of making sure your kids aren't staying up all night. Um, Netgear's gotcha. made a lot of family-oriented products because mm -hmm. they, they also have the baby monitor, the Arlo baby monitors are very big and so... Sense. This is this device device is best if you already have the Orbi mesh network, yeah. which is a great mesh network, highly rated. Um, mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Um, if you already have it, it's great because then all you need is to buy the speaker. Um, if you were thinking of getting another satellite anyway, and that's only three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. but uh, the whole thing, the whole set together, is four hundred and thirty dollars which is kind of expensive. It's a lot of money. Um, especially when you think about like some of the other mesh networks are around that price or they started around that price, but they have a lot of, you know, they have many different satellites. Well, and the Samsung one that just came out has smart things built into it. So it serves as a hub and that's that's still cheaper than, than these two. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes with three nodes in the box. Mm -hmm. So, and a hub. Yeah. So uh, it's available at the end of this month. So check it out. Um, and uh, you, you, especially if you already are in the Netgear family. Yeah. <laughs> Megan Maroney and Florence Ion from Know How, our IoT mm -hmm. edition. Know How moves on now into gaming. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Sam Meshkovich and Jason oh. Howell, Know How Gaming. They've already recorded episodes. Are they airing yet? Or are they, they are. All right. Uh, Ian Thompson is here, registered news director, and I think, Ian, it would be a good time for us to answer some questions. Oh, I think that's always a fun. <laughs> it's Let us have the fun. mailbag. It's full of onions. It's <laughs> apparently, it's got a little, little wobble I'm always slightly it. nervous when you open that in case something's going to burst out. You know, no, sometimes just, things do burst Well, out. particularly as you're pointing it at me, if there's, a rabid, right at if there's a you. rabid weasel in there, then I'm going to be very annoyed. Oh, no, thank goodness. No, just mail. <laughs> Pick a, pick a mail, any mail. Uh, I'll go for the one nearest. Why not? Well, that means we you here. get to start. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, okay. Um, this is from David, and uh, he's saying, I'm a long-time Mac user, building my first PC for Plex and Gaming. What's the proper way to, take, to set up Windows 10 for security and backup? I know what to do with a Mac on Time Machine and user accounts, but I'm not sure on Windows. Wow, that's interesting. You know, I just uh, bookmarked a great piece on securing a Mac. Okay. And there are maybe 30 steps you can go through. How do you, but Windows 10, is it even securable? Well, okay. <laughs> in, in, if I was being highly cynical, I'd say the best way to secure it is to take the to computer to the, the shredding machine yeah. and put it straight <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah, but yeah. to be fair, Windows 10 is one of the key selling points of Windows 10 over other Windows operating systems is that they actually have put a lot of work into the security of it. It's continually updated. You've got Windows Defender, which will protect you against your run-of-the-mill virus. You know, I just saw an antivirus uh, test. Mm. We, we talked about it on Security Now on Tuesday. Actually, Defender came in there yeah. with the best of them. I know. That it, it's... It, the only thing negative about Defender was the amount of false positives. It was number one yeah. in false positives. Although I have never once got a false positive. No. I don't know. Have you? No, I mean, I've been running a Windows 10 <clears throat> machine for a couple of years I now. think Defender is good enough at this point that you you really shouldn't be running any other antivirus. You've got a Defender. It's point. sufficient. Yeah. Yeah, what's the you point? Know, it's... And every program you put on a Windows system opens a hole, potentially, yes. right? It, the To me, one of the key pieces of advice for keeping a secure system is running a, as little software mm -hmm. as you as you can. Only what you absolutely need. And, and I think a lot once of us you put stopped stuff you, on. When you've stopped using software, take it off. Yeah. Because this is something that, I mean, it's a pity that Secunia are out of business, or the Secunia checker is out of business that now. That was a great product. It was, yeah. but Does the Sophos, amount of stuff... I think stuff Sophos might have something similar available. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, the amount of stuff that you could <clears> find <throat> on there, that you, I don't even remember putting that on there. I must have been really yeah. drunk, you know? I mean, it's just like... <laughs> we all do that, though, don't yeah. we? We, You know, it, one of the fun things about having a computer is just trying stuff out. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But yeah. that stuff all has to come off because it, you're opening up that, that potential thing. Now, believe it or not, the NSA... 
mm. used to have, and they still do, I believe, uh, a, secu- <laughs> a whole list of things to do to secure various operating systems, mm-hmm. including Windows 10. Now, I, now, this is a weird thing because you think of the NSA as a spy agency, yeah. but they really have dual missions. Yes, they're both, both offensive just, and defensive. Yes, yeah. and so in the defensive arm of the NSA, they have some very good information on securing a Windows Absolutely, Definitely. yeah. So the NSA has got their details. Obviously, Microsoft has got some very good support sites on yep. that. The key thing are update frequently and often. Yep. Make sure Defender is up to date completely. Lock down your apps. And if software is in any way makes you nervous, then just don't put it on. One additional piece of advice, and I've given this for a long time. It says less important than it used to be. But in general, I think it's a good idea, especially if you have other people using your computer, to keep the administrator account as a separate, oh, non, not a yeah. daily use account. And everybody you, should be running as a standard user. Yeah, but it also, if you've got something, if you've got, a, if you're in a situation where you want to try a program that you're not quite sure around, spin up a VM. Don't, there you go. Don't actually put That's it onto the system. Idea. You know, do it all virtually, yeah. and then if anything looks dodgy, just collapse yeah. and gone. Yeah. So, if you're running as administrator, you'll still get the UAC stuff, but mm-hmm. you won't have to enter a password. You just go, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And I think it's just too easy to accidentally. Do something bad. So run as a standard user. If you're mm-hmm. going to test something, I think the VM advice is very good. Yeah. Um, and then on the backup, they've they've actually made that very simple as well. So you can. It's kind of like Apple's Time Machine. You can pick a you can pick a point. You can go back to those settings, and it'll it'll wipe that up. Um, Windows 10. I haven't actually run a RAID system on a Windows 10 system, but that might be a bit involved if you're just using it for gaming. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, generally backup is good. Security is good. But also, if you are getting a Windows 10 system, you're going to have to spend most of a day clicking through endless menus to stop it sending back all your data to Microsoft. A lot of people uh, will just, I mean, I do this. When you're setting up a Windows machine, just do the standard, you know. Yeah. Don't customize. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but in, if, <laughs> if you're at all concerned about your data being... You've got to go through every one of those. And so they've do made not it purposely aut- difficult as yeah. well, which is really frustrating. Do not choose recommended settings. No customize and it will then walk you through every one of those settings some things mm. you i mean it's going to phone home a little bit oh yeah but you can stop a lot of the phoning home yeah but i mean if you're concerned for example about keystrokes going to redmond or, or stuff like that then it's a good idea to lock that stuff down but it is just it's a pain in the backside it'll take a couple of hours but once you've done it once job done very good so what have you got do you feel it's possible to use windows 10 securely you wouldn't bring it to DEF CON. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no I, I like my accounts unpwned, thank you. No, it's, I mean, Windows, it's good enough, yeah. but it's not good, yeah. you know? <laughs> not in a hostile environment, anyway. Oh, no, yeah. no. I mean, But, I mean, at DEF CON, you, you, most, a lot of people even tape up their ports before they go in, into the show. Yeah. Um, you, I'll, I'll uh, find and I'll give you, Anthony, the, uh, the link. I have it in my pin board if you uh, go to my mm. pin board, pinboard.in slash you slash Leo Laporte, a link to, I thought it was a very good write-up somebody did on securing a Mac. Same idea. Okay. And yeah. there's a lot of things like turning on the firewall, turning, mm-hmm. you know, there's just a lot of things. It's not turned on by default with a Mac. No. But I think it's, I think in, in Windows it's turned on by default in a weak way. Outbound is right. not checked, so forth. Because it's going to cause problems. Right. So you shouldn't, I think it always should be a manual thing to, to have it be as secure as possible mm-hmm. because inevitably things won't work that people expect to work, and, and Microsoft doesn't want those support calls. I don't blame them. No, I can, I can see your point on that. One other thing just... I would strongly suggest, especially in the day of SSDs, is that you use whole disk encryption. Absolutely. Uh, BitLocker un- all the way. Unfortunately, on a, on, a, on a Macintosh, File Vault's built into all Macs. Turn that on. It's actually turned on by default now in the new MacBook Pros and mm-hmm. the iMac Pro because they have a support chip, that T2 chip that will automatically do the uh, encryption. On Windows, you have to have a Pro version to have the yeah, BitLocker, I know. That's, which uh, is a shame. It's uh, Honestly, I, I think it's more than a shame. I think it's an absolute crime. And the reason I say it's important for SSDs is SSDs are impossible to fully erase. You can, mm. you, there's always a little bit of stuff Due yeah. to the wear leveling algorithms that are protecting yeah, but even if you rewrite, rewrite like 30 times, there's still something. There's else. always a little left. Yeah. If you immediately turn on encryption before you put anything of value on that machine, at least you'll know that that stuff is not extractable from the machine. If you if you don't have BitLocker, if you have Windows Home, you could use Veracrypt, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there are good packages out there, but the fact that they've left this out of the consumer thing, it's classic Microsoft, but... It, it, may, it creates a pool of, yeah. of insecure computers which can then turn around and bite us on the backside. Well, and we're also seeing people selling hard drives. Uh, there, there was just a study of 
secondhand hard drives bought on eBay, and they're oh, very few with stuff. of them were wiped. Almost yeah. all of them, the data was recoverable, if not right there unerased. I was talking to an IT manager about this, and it was just like, why you do wipe your hard drives? He goes, <clears> well, we. We try to, but then, you know, if my boss decides that it's he wants to junk his laptop, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's, and this is how you get And again, caught. even with an SSD, it's hard to get all that data yes. uh, erased. Most of it will be gone. Here's a question, too, from Tom. I have a friend who has a not secure website. This is a business website. It concerns me that potential customers might be scared off by this warning. Yeah, this is something Google has really brought up now with Chrome. Yeah. Firefox is going to do it too. If a website is not HTTPS, if it's not using TLS, exactly. it will be branded insecure. Now, that may not matter. Uh, yeah, we'd like everything to be secure, mm. HTTPS. But if you're not giving that website a log, if it doesn't have a login, if you don't have any yeah. personal information on there. If it's a personal blog or something, then, you know. Yeah. Um, I noticed your techguylabs.com also has this warning. I don't think it does anymore, uh, so this might be an older question. I wonder how hard it is to get the HTTPS designation, how expensive it is. Thanks, Tom. It's free. There's yeah. a great service called Let's Encrypt. Now, your host has to support this. Mm -hmm. But uh, first thing you should do immediately is go to letsencrypt.com. That will give you a what you need to make this work is a certificate. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how TLS works. And you can get the certificate. You can buy it. We buy ours from DigiCert. Right. Uh, we use extended certificates. Uh, actually, we don't use extended, but we use uh, wildcard certificates, which tend to be very expensive, mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year. And so that's probably why your friend hasn't done this. But he should inquire. Uh, also, WordPress.com, our sponsor, and many other places will allow you to turn that on yes. uh, for free. Uh, my WordPress site is secured. If you go to leolaporte.com, there's a checkbox. It's secured. If you're running a hosted word, self-hosted WordPress, Let's Encrypt works on that. So first of all, have your friend check letsencrypt.com and see if his hosting is supported by Let's Encrypt. If it is, great news. It's free. It's easy. It's usually one button click, and it yeah. just does it automatically. If not, he should check with his hosting company. Mm -hmm to see if they offer some sort of certificate. If not, yeah, you'll have to go to a certificate authority and buy a cert. And then, that's actually the easy part, <laughs> then you'll have to apply that cert to your server, and that may take some tech support from your uh, web hosting company. We had enormous problems going on to HTTPS because of advertising-led sites. So, you know, you have, you've got to build that side into it as well. It's but tricky. It's really yeah. worth doing. We use, a, a, similarly at twit.tv, we use a variety, it's a very complicated chain of, yeah. of sites. We have Heroku and Redis, and we have a back end, and we, we also have different servers. We use AWS. Mm. So all of those had to have the certificate. All of them had to be properly configured. That is a job, thank God, we have Russell. <laughs> that is a job yes. for a pro. And Russell did it, and he got it all working. And I think, if, you, if I'm not wrong, if you go, it is not... That's Okay, we're working on Tech Guy Labs. We did get a certificate for it, and maybe mm. Russell hasn't yet fully applied it. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's the problem with being an IT manager is there's always something just like that needs well, to be done. It's yeah. also a problem for Tom's friend because he's probably mm. not a geek, uh, yeah. and so he's going to rely on the kindness of strangers and tech support <laughs> uh, to get that certificate in there. See if his hosting uh, company will support Let's Encrypt. If they That's do, it's the very yeah. easy. If they don't, uh, then you're going to have to uh, buy a certificate. Uh, you, you don't, we need a wild card because wild card means it can be anything dot twit dot TV. Mm -hmm. and, and we do have a lot of different things yeah. dot twit dot TV. But if you don't need a wild card cert, you just need a regular cert, not an extended cert. The extended cert is the one where the full green bar, Google does not require that. Mm. Uh, those are expensive because they need to verify a lot of personal information. Yes. That means a human being has to call, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but if all it is is a certificate, um, it's not hugely expensive. DigiCert is our preferred provider. We get all our stuff from DigiCert. Although, believe it or not, Russell said, you know, it's, I got a cheaper one from GoDaddy. Go, so GoDaddy will do it too. Mm -hmm. In fact, if GoDaddy is his hosting company, which it is for a lot of people. It should be easy as pie. It's easy as pie. Mm -hmm. You can have them do it, and it may cost a little bit. But it's well worth doing it. It does not mean it's more, it's less hackable. It means, for instance, somebody couldn't do a man in the middle. Yes, attack. that's the key. That's the key aspect too. Yeah, and uh, and if you do, you know, I mean, if you do send that site information, mm. if it's secure, that means that information is encrypted in transit, and that's important too. You certainly yeah. want your email provider to be uh, HTTPS, and everybody else who you send, person, you know, credit card numbers, Amazon, bank, those should all be HTTPS. Um, very nice, very mm. nice. The chat is not going to ever be secure. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, because yeah, we, chat, I can see no it. reason to spend <laughs> money to make the chat secure. But everything else, and that's actually because even though it's twit.tv, it's running mm. on a completely different server. Yeah. And making uh, it HTTPS is more complicated. I don't. That's I don't what I do love going into the chat room because people are yeah. generally very friendly. So what if somebody man in the middle is your IRC chat? Yeah, and so <laughs> really, really, you're worried about that. <clears throat> uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Ian, for making the trip up here. No, no, it was fun. Now that there's no English shop in Petaluma, Ian's got no reward for coming all the way up. Well, actually, you say that, but there is a British pub on the way. Ah! <laughs> no, I will be popping on my way back I, down. I'll be popping down for a half pint of beer and a serving, sausage roll. One of the serving wenches there works uh, works for us. Oh, really? On the weekend, yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't call her a wench in person. I should bloody needless, well hope not. <laughs> needless to say. We get her to bring you out some of their sausage rolls, because they're really, really good. Really? Are they good? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, Kim, we do the sausage rolls. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Next week, Aaron Newcomb will be joining us. He is a great guy on Maker stuff, mm -hmm. Linux stuff, open source software. So send us your questions. Uh, here's how you uh, you do that. Give us, give us the question. Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. We always appreciate those questions. And we'll attempt to get you on the air, too. We'd like to see you, see the video. If you are uh, interested in watching the show, we had a nice studio audience this mm -hmm. week. All you have to do is email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you if you're going to be in the Petaluma area on a Saturday afternoon. We do the show about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC. If you want to watch it live, we also have a live stream, twit.tv slash live. And if you do watch live, you can watch at the insecure chat room at irc.twit.tv. <laughs> you can also watch after the fact. All of our shows are available at our website, twit.tv. In the case of this show, twit.tv slash NSS. And go to twit.tv slash subscribe so that you will subscribe and get a copy of this automatically the minute it's available in your phone or your device. You can also listen on your uh, Amazon Echo. Or and there's also the newsletter. Who could ever forget the newsletter? Indeed. That's yes. also twit.tv slash subscribe. Get that newsletter. Hey, thank you for being here. We'll see you next time on the new screensavers. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh.